This is behind the counter at a local Japanese Yoshoku restaurant. So today I'm back in Tokyo's Asakusa area and we're going three generations deep at this restaurant behind me. It actually started earlier this morning so let's cut to that now. Today, I'm taking you behind the counter and deep into the kitchen of Paichi, a 90 year old Yoshoku restaurant, meaning Japanese influenced Western cuisine. Hidden in a back alley just a few steps from the area's Kaminarimon main street, it's made a name for itself for its rich and uniquely Japanese born beef stew, served in a hot iron pot. I don't know about you, but there's just something about Asakusa's vibe that's always got me fired up. Let's go! Good morning! Sure. <laughs> this is Sasagawa san, the third generation owner of the shop. Oh, hello. Not at all. The shop is very much run by the family, with his mother, wife, and aunt. But like all days, he's the only chef, so his mornings start early. What do you do first in the morning? I bet. What's that? Ah, okay, so you're still working on it. Oh no! Sorry to hear that. Where's the pain? Ouch! What's that for? Because the ingredients of the shop's signature beef stew have different cooking times, he simmers them separately while also preparing other items. As the only chef at the shop, he's keenly aware of all the tasks ahead of him for the day, so he diligently works committed to creating the highest quality food possible. Damn, he's using 8 pots all at the same time! By the way, do you live upstairs? Oh, how old is your son? Is he gonna take over the shop? Oh, really? What does he want to do? Ah, what's he studying? Nice. Do you have any other kids? Oh, what does she do? That's brilliant. He says that as a father, he wants to respect their dreams and doesn't want to force them into the family business, but adds that his son is currently working part-time at a ramen shop, and if he wanted, could even change the place into a ramen shop in the future. At the end of the day, their happiness is his happiness. So why the name Paichi? Ah, I see. He says that the shop started out as a bar by his grandfather, but later he converted it to a Yoshoku restaurant in 1936, well before it became popular in Japan many years later as a high-end cuisine for the upper class. And fueled by Japan's economic boom, happening entertainment districts like Asakusa were flooded with these restaurants, trying to cash in as dining here became a status symbol. So Yoshoku, with roots in Japan going as far back as the Meiji period, evolved over time to suit the Japanese palate and culture, taking western dishes, altering the taste, and arranging it with rice. So did you always want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh really? What did you do before this? Like selling jeans? Dope. Is that your dad? So were you too close? Jeez, did you guys fight a lot? <laughs> Oh, that sounds rough. 
Apparently, he started working at the shop at 27 and officially took over four years later when his father passed away from cancer. Overwhelmed with the pressure as a young owner, on top of having to repay his father's business debts, he was forced to dig down deep, finding solace in his passion for the culinary arts and the idea of continuing his family's legacy. What's that on your neck? Nice, how long have you been married? He says that he got married at 35 and his son was born one year later. I have a three-year-old son. Yeah, he is. So are your kids still cute? He raised them well. He says that despite his busy schedule, when his kids were younger, he would take them to many different places and travel so that there wouldn't be a distance between them growing up like he experienced with his own father. Further saying that even now, he still finds the time to have dinner with them, valuing his relationship with his family. I see a lot of rock and roll stuff around here. Are you in a rock? <laughs> And you pierced your ear too! <laughs> really? <laughs> Apparently, he used to play the drums in a rock band, dreaming at one point that it may become his career, but eventually he gave it up to take over the family business. That said, his love for it never completely went away, as he still goes to concerts with his friends when he has a spare time. By the way, you know Ueki san from Asahi, right? <laughs> How was he back then? Oh, cool. <laughs> really? <laughs> he didn't tell me that. Now he prepares the shop's mayonnaise from raw ingredients as it serves as an integral part of his dishes as a sauce. It's handmade with a bit of time and much physical effort. Its natural sweetness and vibrant flavor has become a signature part of his cuisine that has many locals coming back time and time again. Wow, you're using all of that oil? <laughs> Oh, you're watching TV? <laughs> okay, so is this a secret recipe? That's a shame. I hope you find an apprentice who has as much passion for this as you do. So why don't you use machines? <laughs> He says that he's already tried many different tools, but the taste just wasn't the same, and it made it even more difficult to make adjustments to the recipe, which is why he prefers doing it by hand. Nice, he's removing the beef tongue from the shop's signature demi glace sauce. It then goes into the beef tongue stew. Next, he prepares the beef that goes into the stew, searing the surface and then boiling it in the demi glace sauce for 8 hours, producing an irresistible tender meat, while at the same time, the rich essence from all the beef, tongue, and tendons are drawn out into the sauce. The entire cooking process spans about one week, but the exact timing of this delicate dish is evaluated by only the chef who's mastered this dish over many years. Oh wow, he's already cleaning the kitchen, focusing first on the stove which he scrubs down every day to ensure that the grease doesn't accumulate over time. I guess not a moment is wasted as he readies his shop for his customers. Eh, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh no! As a small shop owner, he also needs to make minor repairs here and there. Now, 
now he prepares the hamburger, a staple at Japanese yoshoku restaurants. It's completely different from western hamburger meat patties as it's made from a blend of minced meat, egg, panko, and chopped vegetables to create an airier and juicier texture and taste. And of course, served in Japan with rice instead of a bun. By the way, what's your most difficult task here? <laughs> Good morning, that's his aunt. Sure, thank you for having me. So before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you all don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. In fact, I use Squarespace for my website at Tokyo Zebra. Here are just some of the reasons why I love using Squarespace so much. Now with Fluid Engine, their next generation website design system, it helps anyone unlock their creativity with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. And start with the professional website templates, but then customize it like I did for my website to fit your own needs. Check out my homepage, it shows my latest video for both my channels. If you want to sell products online, physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has you covered. Sell custom merch, Squarespace has you covered. Want to accept online appointments? Guess what? Squarespace also has you covered. So there you go, go to squarespace.com today for your free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com forward slash paolo from tokyo and get 10 percent off your first domain or website now he prepares the tonkatsu slices starting from a whole slab of pork he meticulously pulls out the veins as it's not a favorable part of the meat Have you been working here a long time? Right. Awesome. She says her nephew continuing on the family business actually makes her happy. For sure. What do you do on Sundays when the shop is closed? Awesome! Is this you in the picture? So cool! Do you still stand on top? Oh, okay. Oh, you like the ocean? That sounds like fun. You have active friends. Really? But you can make mayonnaise. Do you have kids? Oh, how old are they? Oh, that's his son. Where are you going? Yeah? <laughs> what are you gonna do with your girl? <laughs> are you gonna stick around this area? Oh, that's nice. Have fun. Discovering shops like this is truly what makes these videos worthwhile. Seeing it span from grandfather to grandson and through the passage of time, learning how the shop has overcome hardships through dedication and commitment to create the highest quality dishes is truly remarkable. I can only hope that it continues on so that I can one day visit again with my own grandchildren. Oh, maybe up. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Apparently, he still maintains relationships with the same vendors his father used. Some of them in business now for 40 to 50 years. Hello. She's Sasagawa san's wife. I just saw your son. <laughs> Maybe. What have you been up to? That's a busy morning. So it's their routine while her husband does the prep in the kitchen, she takes care of the morning house chores and after she finishes, she helps with the shop. So did you ever think you'd work in this business? I see, so what do you like about this job? Oh. Awesome!
Now he prepares one of their side dishes, napolitan spaghetti, a common item in Yoshoku restaurants. It's basically a soft boiled pasta served in a rich and sweet ketchup sauce which tend to give older generations a nostalgic feeling. Hello, what are you gonna do now? Oh, but you have a dishwasher right there. Anyway, can I ask how old you are? 91? Wow! How long have you been working here? Damn! She actually got married at 13 years old and has been working here ever since, pretty much her entire life. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. How'd you get it? Ah, you're still so active working every morning though. You're incredible. Right before the store opens, he breads the tonkatsu meat, knowing he's gonna need it right away. At 11.30, the restaurant finally opens for business. Look at him go! He cooks up multiple dishes all at once to ensure that the customers don't wait long for their orders. I guess the first customer orders a tokatsu, hamburger, and fried shrimp combo. Fried items like ebi fry and tonkatsu are also popular items at the shop, which are fried in camellia lard from Holland, known to be the most premium kind, helping create an unforgettable crispiness and unique umami. Ah, uh, that's their signature beef stew. He mixes the ingredients only after it's been ordered by the customers, unlike other places with pre-cooked stews. The shop stew has its own distinct lightness, blended with a complex flavor and deep umami. And before noon, all the seats are filled and getting busier than ever. Excuse me, do you come here often? Cool, has anything changed over the years? So, what's your recommendation here? And what did you order today? Thank you. During the lunch peak, the kitchen gets even busier. The dishes are plated at an incredible speed and swiftly delivered to the customers. While the kitchen continues to cook for the lunch on crowd, the rest of the shop cleans up and starts to prepare for dinner. And that's another one in the books. If you want to visit this shop for yourself, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. Okay, so that's behind the counter at a local Japanese Yoshoka restaurant. If you guys like this video, like always, help me out and hit that like button. And if you guys want to help support the channel, then definitely check out my hot sauce, Paolo from TokyoHotSauce.com. And if you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.